All right, some other news to bring you now. We might be really close to a tipping point in preventing and treating breast cancer. Doctors have developed a new vaccine that could save a lot of lives around the world. Thanks for staying with us this afternoon. I'm Tamson Fidel. I'm Corey Chambers. Breast cancer is one of the leading causes of death in the United States. According to the CDC, about 264,000 cases of breast cancer are diagnosed in women and about 2,400 in men. About 42,000 women and 500 men die each year from this disease. Now health experts, well, they're hoping to change this grim scenario. They sure are. The new vaccine we're talking about inspired by the success of COVID vaccines that use a type of biotechnology that helps your body create certain proteins. In the case of COVID, the proteins fought the virus. In this case, they would generate anti-tumor immunity. All right, with more on this, let's welcome Dr. Amit Kumar, the CEO of the company that is developing this vaccine, and Jennifer Davis, a breast cancer survivor who got the vaccine during trials. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. All right, so let's start with the doctor. And, and can you explain exactly how does this vaccine work? But do it like you're talking to, like, I don't know, like, like a third grader. <laughs> well, there's a protein, uh, it's a lactation protein that only exists in the breast in women when they're lactating. Uh, however, after a woman has stopped breastfeeding, the protein disappears and, until the woman has another baby. Finally, after the age of childbirth, the protein completely disappears and ordinarily never appears again in women, but it appears in breast cancer cells, specifically triple negative breast cancer, which is the most lethal type of breast cancer, and uh, as well as other breast cancers. So our hypothesis is that if we can immunize women against this protein after the age of childbirth, then when the cancer cells arise, the immune system will destroy those cells and not enable those cells to ever become a tumor that you can see on a mammogram. Jennifer, I want to ask you about your story in particular and uh, what it was like to be a trial participant in this. Um, I first want to thank Cleveland Clinic and Anixa for coming together and releasing this trial. It it's something that as a triple negative breast cancer survivor, you know, I, I wanted to be in the trial. I, I wanted, you know, so badly to have kind of that insurance policy that, you know, my cancer won't return. And the thought that this could one day prevent triple negative breast cancer is just, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So what stage, doctor, uh, is this, uh, is a trial in right now? Because, I mean, what you described sounds pretty amazing. So where are you? We're at the early stages. This technology has been under research at the Cleveland Clinic for over 20 years. And I should also say that uh, Jenny was the very first human being that has taken this, uh, this therapy, this uh, vaccine. Uh, in fact, uh, we've done a lot of studies on animals but she was the very first human being to, to take the vaccine. Now, it's going to take a few years. We have to do uh, additional studies, phase two and phase three studies. Uh, but I anticipate that it'll be uh, something that hopefully, assuming the clinical trials go well, will be available uh, in a few years. Doctor, it's just, it's really amazing losing a mother and a stepmother to breast cancer myself. That has been a, a, a big part of, of my life in terms of advocacy and, and, and just fear like, you know, so many other women have. And uh, Jennifer, I'm so happy for you right now. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like once you participated in the study and where it went after that? Um, the trial was, was very seamless. It was three doses. Um, it was two weeks apart. They followed me um, for additional two, um, two additional appointments after that, um, did lab work and um, really had no side effects. Wow. Just lumped at the injection sites. Yeah, no side effects whatsoever. Um, and I look forward to the data being released because, you know, I don't know yet what it showed, but yeah. like I said, I, we're, we're hoping for the best and, and I can't wait to hear it. Were you scared at all when, when they're like, look, you're the first human being getting this thing? Like, we've tested in other animals, but we've never put this in the human before. We're going to put this in you first. I mean, did it, was there a moment of pause, or were you just like, you know what, let's do it. Let's just, let's just see where this goes. There, there was maybe a brief moment of pause, but not really. Um, I asked two questions. I asked if, um, in the lab, if they had seen anybody that had, like, an anaphylactic reaction mm -hmm. immediately after they got the vaccine, if something happened. And the answer was no. And then I asked, 
how many, you know, over this two decades that they've been working on this, how many recurrences did they see? And they didn't see any. So I, I would do it again for sure. Doctor, let me ask you something. Uh, you talk about this being in the clinical trials right now. So what, what happens next? There are other women out there that are fighting this disease right now. They're going through different forms of, of uh, more conventional uh, therapy, chemotherapy, radiation. What happens next, though, if, as they're watching a trial like this, and when could they possibly uh, take part, or would the vaccine be ready? Well, right now we're, we're uh, enrolling women like Jennifer who've had triple negative breast cancer and have gone through standard of care, but they're concerned about recurrence. Mm -hmm. In the United States, there's 3.6 3 million women who uh, are afraid of recurrence. They're breast cancer survivors, and every day they wake up wondering if their breast cancer is going to sure. come back. In addition, there are millions of women who don't even know yet that they may have mutations in certain genes that give them a high uh, probability of uh, getting breast cancer. In fact, a few years ago, uh, Angelina Jolie was famous for publicly telling the world that she had her breast surgically removed, even though she was perfectly healthy at the time, because she wanted to reduce the risk of getting triple negative breast cancer. And, uh, you know, these are all women that ultimately, if our vaccine works the way we hope it will, will uh, we'll be able to just take some shots and never have to worry about getting their breasts removed or having to be treated for yeah. breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I, I know there are a lot of steps in the process to, for, before FDA approval, but assuming everything goes right and every step of the trials go right, are we looking at like next year? Are we looking at five years, 10 years? I mean, how, how long does the process take for something like this that, that so many we people can benefit from? Yeah, we estimate that it'll take about five, between five to 10 years. It's certainly not gonna be next year, but, uh, but over the next couple of years, we'll be enrolling lots of women who are worried about breast cancer, uh, as well as women like Jenny, who are worried about recurrence of breast mm -hmm. cancer. Are women with a BRCA gene, is that what you're talking about? That's correct, uh, BRCA okay. gene mutations, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kumar and Jennifer Davis, thank you both so much for sharing. And uh, Jennifer, certainly the best of luck to you. Thank you.